Welcome to Andy's Corner HVAC, where we say what we want and don't care what the rest think. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That way you get notifications every time a new video comes out. The new books are available on Amazon for Kindle or paperback. The link will be in the description below. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, I'm glad you joined me today. I want to talk to you a little bit about pilot lights. Uh, but first, I want to apologize about the background back here. I know it's pretty blame, plain and drab and boring and whatnot. Uh, our home office is under construction right now. That's why everything's a little echoey. Uh, but eventually, there's going to be a bookcase and everything else back there. So we'll have a better backdrop and things will sound a little better. But we're going to work with what we've got. But today, I want to talk about pilot lights, like the old school standing pilot pilot light. Now, there's not a mass amount of these around anymore. Uh, you know, if you've replaced your furnace in the past several years, I don't know exactly when they quit doing standing pilots in residential gas furnaces, uh, but your actual standing pilot's probably been probably in the 90s. Uh, but there's actually surprisingly a lot of them out there. We get a lot of calls for them. Uh, we get a, I get a lot of questions about them. And I found out that there's a lot of service technicians out there that don't quite understand how they work or what they do. You know, there's several little like, foolproof tricks you can always do to them to make everything work again uh, but you know we want to make sure we get to the root cause of the problem not just you know band-aid fix kind of thing so um, you know with those pilots um, you know like I said this is a standing pilot so what it uh, actually does is there's a flame sitting there all the time right you know a standing pilot it's on 24 7 whenever the thermostat calls for heat uh, it opens a gas valve and pushes uh, more gas across that little flame, ignites the main burners, and then you have heat in the house, right? So to start with that pilot, first, this piece up here on the top is called a hood, right? There's a lot of different types of hoods out there. You can have left tip, right tip, uh, center tip. Uh, you can also have uh, some of the ones that goes out both sides. You can have some of the round ones. There's a lot of different styles. The most common ones, and that's what I'm going to talk about today, is the direction. So if you do go to replace a pilot assembly, always make sure you go back to the same one. So you need to know if it's center tip, left tip, right tip. Now it's probably going to be backwards on the camera, but you get the idea. What you want to do is take that pilot assembly where the screws go in the back, face it towards you, look at the hood, and does that go left? Does that go right? Which way is that pointing or does it just go straight on? That's what direction your pilot tip is. Uh, or the hood of the pilot. Uh, so you want to make sure it's pointing the right direction. If you put the wrong one in, it may not be facing at the burner quite like it's supposed to. You may have uh, complications with ignition and stuff like that. Um, then the other thing, the one thing a lot of people know about, because everybody always wants to replace these things, uh, is the thermocouple. There's a couple different types of thermocouples out there, um, but they're all about the same. You know, the thermocouples themselves, they actually work off what they call a uh, thermoelectric effect. Uh, basically because of the metals that are in there, uh, when that gets hot, uh, it actually creates a millivolt electricity that comes out to the other end here and that's connected to your gas valve. That's what's telling your gas valve that the pilot is lit. Now basically you can look at that thermocouple as a safety. If that is in your pilot assembly, like it's supposed to be, so that sits in there, right? and the flame comes out your hood and blows directly across that thermocouple itself. So that thermocouple is getting warm. It, as it gets warm, it creates millivolt electricity, comes back to the gas valve, tells it it's open. If that pilot were to go out and that thermocouple cools, now your gas valve knows that there's not a pilot going anymore. So it can't open the main valve of that gas valve because if it were to, it's gonna let a bunch of gas out. There's no ignition source. So at that point, it's just gonna be pumping gas out. If that pilot goes out at any point in time while the unit's running, uh, it's going to shut the main burners off. It's going to close the main uh, burner valve in, or main valve in the gas valve, uh, and it's going to stop operation. That way we can't hurt anything, anybody, all that kind of stuff. So whenever somebody, and a lot of times it techs, uh, homeowners do it a lot. I, talk, I get a lot of phone calls, get a lot of messages, all kinds of things uh, from homeowners. They say, well, my pilot's out. So first of all, you need to identify if your, your furnace actually has a pilot in it. Uh, you, like I said, if it's been manufactured in the last few years or put in in the last few years, it's not going to have a pilot in it. They're not out there in new furnaces anymore, but a lot of the old ones do. But, you know, a lot of people, whenever they have a pilot assembly or a standing pilot of some sort, they just automatically replace the thermocouple. Now, thermocouples themselves, they do fail. I mean, they, they're, I, in my opinion, they're made very cheaply these days. Uh, I think they come from uh, uh, China and they just don't do worth a damn anymore. They just don't last like they used to, excuse my language. Uh, but they, they just don't last. Um, 
And so, you know, they do fail, but it's always, uh, uh, that's what everybody always goes to. As soon as the pilot won't light or the pilot won't stay lit, whatever it may be, they automatically replace the thermocouple thinking that's fixing it. Now, in some cases it does. I'd say probably about 50% of the time it will fix the situation. But for one, if you're going to replace the thermocouple, you need to check the old one or you need to check the original one and see if it's actually generating millivolt electricity. You know, a thermocouple creates very, very, very small volts of millivolt electricity. That's why it's called millivolt. It's, it's very, very small. Uh, but it does not take much voltage for that gas valve to actually remain open. So you need to be using a multimeter. You need to check it. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. I think I have another video out there on exactly how to check a thermocouple. I'm not going to get into that today. We're just doing pilot basics. Um, but you need to check it and see if it's actually producing. Uh, most of your thermocouples uh, usually uh, will produce at least 25 or so uh, millivolts uh, to keep if it's in good shape, got a good flame on it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it gets down too low, then it's not reliable. But the one thing that I see that everybody loves to miss. Now, like I said, you've got your thermocouple sits on this side of your pilot assembly. You've got your hood that sits on there. Then you've got the body itself of it. Now, normally we would have a little uh, quarter inch uh, aluminum tubing coming from the pilot assembly to the gas valve itself. Now, this one, it's been removed because it's a little easier for me to whip it around in front of the camera and kind of stuff like that. But you get the idea. But that tubing comes on there. There's a little nut on here. They call that an inverted flare because when you actually take that thing out, it actually is a little flare. It's got a ferrule on it and it pinches onto that aluminum tubing whenever you crank it down. Either way, a uh, 7 16 wrench will take that off of there and that will spin on your aluminum tubing, slide back, that way you can get into it. But the one thing everybody forgets, inside this pilot assembly, where that inverted flare was, is an orifice. Now this is what everybody forgets. That little bitty thing there has a teeny tiny hole. I mean, you can't even see inside that hole right there, um, but it is very, 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 very small. Uh, what that does is basically regulates how much gas comes out of that pilot assembly because you, you don't need much of a pilot flame by any means, but you do have to have enough. So that orifice right there with that little teeny tiny hole that's in there, it can become restricted or corroded shut or whatever it is, either all the way shut or just restricted. It doesn't allow enough gas to come out. At that point, you have a very weak flame or no flame at all on your pilot assembly. So at that point, the thermocouple itself cannot get hot enough to generate the millivolt electricity to send it back to the gas valve to keep it open. So the gas valve thinks that the pilot's not lit, even though it may or may not be, and all of a sudden puts everything out. So make sure you're checking pilot orifices. Now, pilot orifices are very inexpensive things for the most part, at least in comparison to the other furnace parts out there. It's very small, it's very inexpensive, just replace it. Normally, if I go on a service call and I have an issue with the pilot, be it uh, pilot orifice or the actual thermocouple being the issue, I recommend replacing both. They're inexpensive, uh, they're easy parts, and you can have reliable, uninterrupted service at that point as long as everything's in good shape. So make sure that you are checking your pilot orifices or put a new pilot orifice in, and then whenever you tighten that back up, Make sure that it's tight. There's no need for any thread tape. You don't need uh, thread sealant, pipe dope, anything like that. You don't need that on there. It's a flare, uh, and that ferrule on the pipe is what ha helps it to actually flare and seal off to that. Uh, so you don't need any of that. The other thing is make sure everything's clean. You know, make sure this hood itself, a lot of times they develop a little bit of rust and stuff on there. This is actually a pretty good looking pilot assembly uh, for being used. It kind of surprised me. It looks so good. But, um, you know, make sure that this is staying clean. Up here in the grooves, you get a lot of rust and all kinds of stuff. Uh, down in here, uh, where it actually draws air in for the fire, a lot of times that can get a lot of dust and dirt and stuff built up on it. And then all of a sudden, we don't have enough oxygen for the flame, so we don't have a very good flame. And the pilot either doesn't stay lit or it goes out easily, uh, something like that. So, you know, make sure the pilot assembly itself is in good shape. If not, you can replace the whole assembly. Like I said, if you're going to replace it, you just have to know what style you have, what's it look like, which direction does the, the hood point the flame. Um, but, you know, if you do have a pilot and you have an issue, let's say it won't stay lighting or it lights, but it goes out intermittently, look at that pilot flame. Because uh, a, a pilot flame, I tell everybody, usually should be short and blue. Because if you're short and blue, usually it's hot. You know, obviously it has to be long enough to get that flame all the way to the uh, thermocouple or at least pretty close to it. 
but a short blue flame is hot. And it's hot enough to generate enough millivolt electricity through that thermocouple to keep it running. If that pilot, if that flame gets long and yellow and lazy and just a little bit, you reach in there to look and you breathe on it and you see it wailing and flailing back and forth. That's what we call a lazy flame. That lazy flame is not hot, or at least not hot enough, and it's not strong enough to actually keep um, that gas valve open or the pilot valve open on the gas valve because it can't keep the thermocouple hot enough. So, you know, there's a few things to look out for. Make sure you're checking all those things. Don't just throw a thermocouple in it just because. Uh, you know, you go to a lot of those old guys' houses and they've got like five thermocouples hanging on a nail next to the furnace. Uh, if you're one of those people, quit replacing the thermocouples. Chances are there's something else wrong. Um, you know, so just, just make sure you know what to look for. Check it all out. Don't just throw parts at it. Know what you're doing. Uh, like I always say, you know, I don't like parts changers. I want to know the root cause and I want to fix the, the problem the right way correctly and have it done and you don't have to worry about it again. So if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you and God bless. Hey guys, just want to let you know my new book is out there. It's available on Amazon for Kindle and paperback. Uh, it's pretty easy read, 62 pages of all your homeowner heating and air questions answered. So go ahead and check it out and give it a review. Let me know what you think. Thank you and God bless.